Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we delve into the world of financial independence with Rich Dad's Cashflow Quadrant by Robert T. Kiyosaki and Sharon L. Lecter. Published in 1998, this enlightening guide reveals the pathway to financial freedom, expanding on the teachings from the acclaimed Rich Dad Poor Dad series. This book not only provides a mix of instructive advice and autobiographical insights, but also challenges common misconceptions about achieving financial success. Robert T. Kiyosaki, best selling author and founder of Rich Global LLC and the Rich Dad Company, shares his expertise alongside Sharon L. Lecter, an esteemed businesswoman and financial educator. Together, they explain the cash flow quadrant and how moving beyond traditional employment can lead to wealth creation and financial independence. Their combined experiences and successes lend credence to their strategies for escaping the daily grind and making money work for you. Rich Dad's Cash Flow Quadrant is tailored for those weary of the 9-to-5 routine, individuals inspired by the financial achievements of moguls like Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, and anyone with aspirations that outsize their current financial capabilities. Through this episode, listeners will gain insights into shifting their mindset towards making more strategic, income-generating decisions, all within less than 20 minutes. Join us to uncover how you, too, can navigate your way through the quadrants towards the financial freedom you've always dreamed of. Rich Dad's Cash Flow Quadrant, Guide to Financial Freedom. Introduction, unlock the secrets to achieving financial freedom. Imagine the possibility of bidding farewell to your daily grind, not at the twilight of your career, but much earlier, embracing a life abundant with financial freedom. This isn't a mere daydream for the audacious few. It's a reality they've sculpted with determination, knowledge, and strategic action. At the heart of such transformational success stories lies Robert T. Kiyosaki, an individual who refused to follow in the footsteps of his overworked father, a government employee ensnared in debt and financial despair. Witnessing his father's struggles, Kiyosaki pledged to carve a different path for himself, a journey marked by wealth creation and financial independence. This narrative isn't about acquiring quick riches through elusive tricks, but about immersing yourself in the profound principles that have steered Kiyosaki toward decades of prosperity in investing and entrepreneurship. It's an exploration of the bedrock values that can propel you from financial stagnation to a life where money serves as a tool for achieving dreams, not an anchor weighing down your aspirations. Prepare to journey through the essence of these insights as we unfold. The four distinct avenues through which cash flows and how identifying your path can reshape your financial destiny. The implications of the information age on traditional employment and retirement plans, urging a re-evaluation of how we secure our financial future. The often under-discussed role of fear in our financial decisions and how conquering it can pivot us from scarcity to abundance. Embark on this exploration, not just as a reader, but as an active participant, ready to embrace the principles that have transformed mere ambitions into tangible financial freedom. Welcome to the first chapter of your new financial narrative. Part 1. Decoding the Four Paths to Earning Money Picture this. You've got a piece of paper in front of you, and you sketch out a simple plus sign. This symbol, more than just intersecting lines, creates four distinct spaces. Let's think of these as the quadrants of financial endeavor. Here's the deal. The ways we make money slot neatly into these four quadrants. Each quadrant is tagged with a letter, E, S, B, and I, unfolding a map of our economic landscape. On the left side, you'll find E and S. E is for employee encompassing those of us who clock in and out, earning a salary from someone else's enterprise. Right next to it, the S stands for self-employed or small business owners, 
showcasing individuals who've taken the helm but are still at the heart of their business's daily operations. Venture over to the right side of our plus sign and we encounter the B and I quadrants. B represents big business owners, individuals who've scaled their ventures beyond the daily grind, employing others to manage the operations. Then there's the I quadrant, standing for investor, where money is put to work in stocks, real estate, or other ventures to generate more wealth without direct labor. Every person's journey to make a living aligns with one or more of these quadrants. Take, for instance, the versatile career of a medical doctor in the United States. She could find herself in the E quadrant, shouldering patient care within a larger institution. Alternatively, she might embrace the S quadrant by spearheading a private practice, combining her medical expertise with entrepreneurial spirit. But why stop there? As her career advances, she could transition into the B quadrant, steering a clinic without being caught in its day to day operations, truly embodying the role of a business mogul. And with the financial fruits of her labor, stepping into the I quadrant by investing in various markets becomes a reachable horizon. While the narrative seems straightforward, each quadrant asks for a unique set of skills and personal attributes, and there's a guise of fulfillment in every quadrant. But here's the kicker. If financial freedom is your endgame, if you're yearning to leap beyond the constraints of E and S to where your money works for you, then casting your sails towards the B&I quadrants is imperative. Let's delve deeper into what it takes to make this pivotal shift from working to owning, embarking on a journey from financial dependence to independence. Part 2. Beyond Hard Work. A Tale of Two Fathers and the Path to Financial Freedom. In the scenic landscapes of Hawaii, young Robert Kiyosaki found himself in an enlightening position. Guided by the contrasting philosophies of two pivotal figures in his life, one, his biological father, a government official entrenched in the pursuit of academic and vocational excellence, and the other, his friend Mike's dad, a self-taught entrepreneur whose wealth-building endeavors painted a different picture of success. Here lies the crux of the narrative. Merely studying and working hard don't pave the way to financial freedom. The journey of Kiyosaki's biological father, affectionately termed as his poor dad, epitomized traditional markers of success. Armed with a robust education and a respectable position within the government, he was a testament to the virtues of diligence and academic achievement. However, his reality was far from idyllic. Burdened by perpetual work commitments and a calendar brimming with obligations, he found himself trapped in a cycle that left little room for the simple joys of life, like unwinding with a good book or spending quality time with family. Despite his efforts, financial serenity remained elusive. Rooted in the belief that hard work alone could secure financial stability, he was blind to the necessity of financial education. The world of investing, to him, was nothing more than folly, a realm for the imprudent. Enter the rich dad, Mike's father, who embodied the antithesis of everything the poor dad stood for. Lacking a formal education did not deter him. It fueled his quest for knowledge in areas that truly mattered on the road to wealth creation. Concepts like dividends and land valuation were the tools of his trade a trade that promised not just wealth, but something far more precious, time. Driven by the resolve to break free from the confines of the E and S quadrants, the rich dad embraced real estate. His journey began with modest property investments, but swiftly evolved into a thriving hotel enterprise, generating a steady stream of passive income. This very income afforded him the luxury of time, time that his critics, confined by their conventional paths, could only dream of. This tale of two fathers illustrates a profound lesson. The path to financial freedom diverges from the traditional ethos of hard work and academic pursuit. Instead, it beckons a journey of financial education, investment, and the courage to tread unconventionally. Part 3. The Parable of Effort. The Difference Between Diligence and Strategy. Contained within the walls of Mike's family home 
Kiyosaki found himself privy to an enlightening conversation with his mentor, the rich dad. This discussion, unbeknownst to him at the time, served as the seedling for a profound understanding of wealth accumulation, distinguishing the hard workers from the strategic thinkers. Here lies the wisdom imparted. Hard work and intellect in work are distinct paths, each leading to different destinations. Rich Dad shared a fable that vividly illustrated this divergence. In a small parched village, the community sought a solution for their dire need for water. They contracted two individuals, Ed and Bill, each tasked with the same goal, but approaching it from starkly different viewpoints. Ed embodied the archetype of the diligent worker. Opting for immediate action, he transported water using steel buckets, a method that, while straightforward, demanded exhaustive labor. His days were long, his body weary, yet his pockets only modestly filled from the toil. Meanwhile, Bill embarked on a journey not of manual labor, but of mental labor. Rather than rushing to the lake with buckets, he concocted a plan. By drafting a business strategy, securing investors, and assembling a team, he constructed a stainless steel pipeline, revolutionizing water access not just for one village, but for several. The fruits of his endeavor were clean, accessible water, and a venture that, in time, rendered his physical involvement unnecessary. Bill's pipeline didn't just supply water, it was a conduit to unbridled prosperity. Ultimately, he sold his enterprise for a fortune, retiring in the lap of luxury. Ed, with his buckets, was left to confront the limitations of his approach, hard work that had cemented him in the E and S quadrants without a legacy to pass on. This tale of two contractors continues to serve as a stark illustration of the disparity between mere exertion and insightful execution. The story unfurls the quintessential truth. While hard work is commendable, working smart by leveraging ideas, creating systems, and thinking strategically paves the way to lasting wealth and freedom. Part 4. Navigating Financial Independence in the Digital Era The Dawn of the Information Age Around 1991 heralded seismic shifts in the global economy, redefining the very fabric of job security and financial dependence on government aid. As technology weaved its intricate web across continents, it ushered out the dependable, union-heavy, pension-reliant industrial backbone that many had leaned on for decades. Yet despite this transformation, a considerable swath of society remains anchored in bygone expectations. The heart of the matter is this. In the contemporary tapestry of work and wealth, relying on governmental crutches for financial security is a strategy fraught with vulnerabilities. This change underscores a profound disconnect between the expectations fostered by past generations and the stark realities of today's economy. The belief that a lifetime of hard work and dependable tax contributions would guarantee governmental support in the waning years of life is no longer a sustainable formula. Imagine, by 2020, an anticipated 100 million Americans looking towards the government for pension funds, health care, and other forms of financial aid, a staggering number that encapsulates the enormity of the promised yet precarious support. This expectation is not ungrounded. It is built on the premise of a reciprocal contract, where contributions to the system warrant provisions in return. However, the mathematics of fulfillment are daunting, tipping into the realm of fiscal impracticability. Should the government resort to tax hikes to honor these promises, it risks a capital exodus as the ultra-rich seek sanctuary in low-tax havens, leaving a gaping chasm in the promised safety net. This brings us to the crucial realization. The golden years envisioned by our elders, underpinned by governmental support, are but a mirage in today's economic landscape. So, what's the way forward? The answer lies in straying from the conventional path and venturing into the realms of big business ownership, B, or investment, I. Kiyosaki's tale of two fathers illustrates this point with poignant clarity. His biological father, a government official, epitomized the traditional worker, reliant on government safety nets, 
only to find himself ensnared in political crossfire that obliterated his job security and left him floundering in unsuccessful business endeavors and spiraling debt. Conversely, his rich dad embarked on a journey that led him to the I-Quadrant, where he cultivated a stream of passive income, safeguarding his financial future against the unpredictable tides of life. In essence, as we navigate the currents of the information age, the old paradigms of hard work and governmental reliance falter. Our financial security, and ultimately our freedom, hinges on our capacity to adapt, to acquire an entrepreneurial and investment-driven mindset that propels us into the protective harbors of the B&I quadrants. Part 5. Understanding the personality drive of each financial quadrant. In the intricate dance of finance and career choice, Robert Kiyosaki, through the wisdom imparted by his rich dad, unveiled an essential truth. The four quadrants not only categorize methods of income generation, but also mirror the diverse personalities and attitudes towards work and wealth. Let's delve into the distinct attributes that characterize the inhabitants of each quadrant. First off, the E quadrant, home to the employees. Individuals who resonate with this quadrant often prioritize security and benefits above all. Their professional life is guided by a craving for certainty, a stable paycheck, employment contracts, and predictability in their financial affairs. Their motivation, or perhaps their constraint, is often rooted in a fear of taking risks and a dread of financial instability. Regardless of their position, from janitors to high-level executives, it's the comfort of contractual assurance that beckons them here. Segwaying to the S quadrant, This domain is populated by the self-employed and small business owners, the protagonists of their own ventures. They champion the mantra of being their own boss, yearning for control over their financial fate. For them, meritocracy and earnings is key. Hard work should be directly proportional to income. Coupled with a perfectionist streak, they don't easily trust others to match their standards of work. Independence is their treasure, safeguarded fiercely, often spurred by the fear of losing it. Next up, the B quadrant beckons those with a knack for entrepreneurship on a grand scale. The big business owners. These individuals stand in contrast to the S quadrant. They thrive on delegation and empower smart individuals to drive their vision. Esteeming the art of system building, they erect empires that generate wealth independently of their direct involvement. Classic examples include figures like Henry Ford, whose prowess wasn't in the minutiae, but in orchestrating a symphony of talents to achieve extraordinary success. Here, the ability to trust and empower a team is paramount, allowing these individuals to witness their ventures flourish, albeit from a distance. Finally, the I Quadrant, a territory frequented by the shrewd investor, often the playground of the ultra-rich. Distinguished by their appetite for calculated risks, these individuals are not deterred by market volatility. Rather, they embrace it. However, unlike the capricious nature of gambling, investments here are meticulously researched, thereby reducing the gamble to a strategic move. Esteemed investors like Warren Buffett embody this quadrant. They confront financial tumult with a blend of courage and unparalleled understanding striving toward the ultimate goal of financial freedom. Through Kiyosaki's lens, we see that the choice between the quadrants transcends mere financial strategy. It's a reflection of one's core values, fears, and aspirations. As we navigate our personal journeys towards wealth and fulfillment, understanding the intrinsic motivations that guide us towards one quadrant over another can be a revelatory beacon illuminating our path to financial serenity. Part six, the gateway to financial liberation, business ownership and investing. Dreaming of financial freedom is a universal aspiration. The thought of having the liberty to pursue your passions, be it globetrotting, indulging in art or diving with majestic manta rays is undeniably enticing. But transforming these dreams into reality demands more than just wishful thinking. It requires a strategic approach 
that has been the cornerstone of the wealthiest individual's journeys to financial prosperity. Here's the essence of the strategy. Elevating yourself to financial freedom is most effectively achieved through the dual pursuit of business ownership and savvy investing. Consider the trajectories of magnates like Bill Gates, Rupert Murdoch, and Warren Buffett. Their narratives unfold from the B quadrant, where they established and expanded their businesses, to the I quadrant, skillfully multiplying their wealth through investments. At the core of their ascent to riches was the accumulation of capital, an endeavor where investing plays a pivotal role. But to embark on meaningful investment ventures, one needs two crucial resources, a steady stream of capital and time. Creating a business that thrives independently not only generates this essential capital, but also affords you the time to focus on investment opportunities. This replicates the model of Kiyosaki's rich dad and his hotel empire, illustrating a system designed for passive income generation, a business that flourishes even in the owner's absence. The transition from business ownership to impactful investing is not merely about having the funds at your disposal, but understanding the dynamics of successful business models, insights that dramatically enhance your investment decisions. This acumen, honed from steering a business, inherently guides you to investments with promising lasting returns. Conversely, a leap directly into the realm of investment without the foundation of business experience often spells disaster. Many individuals, primarily from the e and quadrants, venture prematurely into investing, only to falter due to a lack of understanding of robust business systems and limited capital, amplifying their financial risks. However, the path to investment is not exclusively reserved for those who tread the entrepreneurial route. For those averse to business creation but still eager to explore the investment landscape, knowledge becomes your greatest ally. Understanding the myriad of investor profiles and strategies is imperative. In our journey towards financial independence, marrying the disciplines of business ownership and astute investing emerges as a paramount strategy, a veritable bridge from the security of consistent earnings to the ultimate freedom of wealth expansion. Part 7. The Investor's Ladder. Climbing the Five Levels to Financial Mastery. Diving into the world of investment might initially seem as treacherous as surfing amidst tiger sharks, yet with proper guidance, even a novice can transform into a seasoned investor. The journey from amateur to expert hinges on understanding the distinctive classes of investors that populate the financial ecosystem. At the foundation, we encounter the zero financial intelligence level, a classification that, regrettably, captures a broad segment of the population. This group has little to no disposable income for investment, primarily due to a lifestyle that incurs more debt than their earnings can offset. A crucial first step for individuals in this category is to achieve a basic financial balance, setting the stage for future investment ventures. Ascending to the second rung, we find the savers are losers level. Members of this group have embraced the traditional mantra that saving is synonymous with financial prudence, However, the contemporary economic landscape, characterized by meager interest rates, challenges this notion. The financial turmoils, such as the 2008 crisis, have underscored the peril of relying solely on savings for financial upliftment, revealing that mere saving might not suffice in securing one's financial future. The third level unveils the I'm too busy investor. Individuals at this stage opt to delegate their investment decisions to financial advisors, a strategy that, while sometimes beneficial, can bear significant risks. The fallout from the 2008 financial debacle illuminated the dangers of entrusting one's financial well-being to advisors who may lack a genuine investment acumen, primarily serving as employees rather than seasoned investors themselves. Progressing to the fourth echelon, the I'm a professional level, marks the advent of genuine investment prowess. Investors in this cadre take the reins of their financial destiny, pursuing education in investment vehicles like stocks or real estate, and undertaking rigorous research. This commitment to self-education in finance equips them with the insights and strategies necessary for judicious investment decisions, underscoring the indispensable value of financial literacy. 
Culminating at the pinnacle is the capitalist level, the realm of investment titans akin to Warren Buffett. This elite status involves a two-pronged strategy, successful navigation through the realm of business ownership, the B quadrant, followed by the strategic allocation of accumulated capital into ventures bearing higher risks and potentials. While this zenith of investment mastery offers unparalleled opportunities for wealth accumulation, it represents a formidable challenge, achievable for those dedicated to constructing and leveraging business empires. If the towering heights of the capitalist level seem beyond reach, aspiring towards the IMA professional level provides a more tangible target. Regardless of the chosen path, a foundational principle remains clear. A robust financial education is not merely an investment in knowledge. It is the cornerstone of enduring financial success and independence. Part 8. Mastering the Emotional Tug-of-War of Money In the human saga, our emotions often chart the course of actions, leading us through life with an intensity that can both uplift and unravel. Love, perhaps the most celebrated of our irrational feelings, validates our penchant for emotion-driven decisions. Yet when it comes to money, surrendering to our emotions can steer us into turbulent waters. The essence of our financial journey revolves around a critical realization. Money stirs deep-seated emotions that demand mastery. Take, for instance, a young Robert Kiyosaki, navigating his days in the Air Force, where he was schooled in wilderness survival, preparation for a scenario where his plane might be downed, It was during these sessions that he encountered a visceral demonstration of irrational fear. The introduction of a harmless garden snake sent a fellow trainee, a robust pilot, into a frenzy of terror, showcasing how phobias can dominate rational thought. This anecdote serves as a parallel to the way many of us react to financial matters. The prospect of investing can unnerve the calmest individuals, transforming them into repositories of fear and indecision. Money, integral to our security and comfort, becomes a source of emotional upheaval rather than a rational tool. This is mirrored in the erratic ebbs and flows of financial markets, which, far from embodying rationality, are swayed by the twin specters of fear and greed. Yet, it is in the realm of finance that we must usher our logic to the forefront, conquering the emotional storm that money invariably incites. Delving into the world of investments, be it property or stocks, need not be an odyssey through treacherous waters. The principles governing wealth accumulation are surprisingly straightforward, reminiscent of the board game monopoly. Success hinges on the strategic acquisition of assets, the proverbial houses that will generate returns. Embracing a rational perspective towards money is not merely advantageous but transformative. This was a lesson Kiyosaki internalized early in his quest for financial autonomy. A challenging period saw him and his wife without a home, their lives confined to the constraints of their car. Yet, they refused to yield to despair. Anchored in the conviction that rational financial strategies would prevail, they embarked on building a business. Their meticulous and enlightened approach bore fruit, elevating them to millionaire status within four years. In the grand tapestry of our lives, money, much like any phobia, can ensnare us in a web of irrational fears. The key to liberation lies in recognizing these emotional undercurrents and steadfastly navigating through them with informed, logical decision-making. The journey from emotional chaos to financial clarity is not merely possible. It's essential for those seeking to harness the true power and potential of their wealth. Part 9. Embarking on the path to wealth, slow and steady wins the race. The age-old adage that a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step takes on a nuanced meaning when applied to the realm of financial growth. It's more accurate to say, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a baby step. In the pursuit of financial freedom, the allure of quick wealth, peddled by myriad get-rich-quick schemes, tempts many. These promises of instant fortune are enticing, but the truth they conceal is that the path to sustainable wealth is neither quick nor easy. This rush toward immediate riches often enriches none but the purveyors of these schemes, 
whose own wealth was likely amassed through gradual, persistent effort. The essence of financial achievement lies in embracing baby steps and maintaining a long-term outlook. In an era dominated by the quest for instant gratification, the wisdom of patience and persistence in wealth creation cannot be overstated. History's most successful investors, such as Warren Buffett, who started by selling chewing gum door to door, exemplify the virtue of starting small and gradually building towards monumental success. A disciplined approach focused on modest, attainable goals without jeopardizing your financial stability for fleeting riches is key. Looking ahead with pragmatism is equally critical. The information age, for all its marvels, heralds a future rife with job insecurity and market volatility. This uncertain landscape underscores the importance of not becoming overly reliant on a single source of income, however lucrative it may currently seem. It's an invitation to diversify one's approach to earning and investing. Central to this long-term journey is the power of compound investments. Initiating investments, no matter the scale, and reinvesting the returns to fuel further growth. This compounding effect, often hailed as the eighth wonder of the world by none other than Albert Einstein, harnesses time and incremental gains to build substantial wealth. Beyond the mechanics of investing, enriching your financial education emerges as a non-negotiable pillar of long-term financial success. A deep understanding of markets, whether stock or real estate, provides a sturdy foundation equipping you with the knowledge to make informed decisions and navigate the inevitable ebbs and flows of the economic tide. As we navigate the path to financial freedom, the journey unveils itself as one not of swift ascension, but of deliberate, educated steps and a vigilant eye towards the horizon. In knitting together a strategy that prizes education, patience, and the foresight to plan beyond the immediate, we lay the groundwork for a future not just of wealth, but of enduring financial autonomy. Final summary. In the vast landscape of personal finance and wealth accumulation, there exists a myriad of paths one can take. Broadly categorized, these paths are working as an employee, venturing into self-employment or small business, diving into big business ownership, and exploring the realms of investing. Each of these routes offers its own set of challenges and rewards, And while there's no universally correct path, certain avenues are more conducive to achieving financial freedom. The essence of true financial liberation lies in strategically navigating towards big business ownership and investing. These domains not only promise more substantial financial returns, but also offer the luxury of passive income, a critical component for those aspiring to break free from the traditional work income cycle. Investing, in particular, stands as a cornerstone practice for anyone aiming to secure their financial future, irrespective of their entrepreneurial inclinations. At the heart of financial decision-making is an emotional undercurrent that often steers individuals away from rational choices. Money, being central to our existence and well-being, triggers a spectrum of emotions, making it challenging to approach investment opportunities with a cool head. Yet, Mastering the emotional side of finance is pivotal. It is the bridge that leads from the tumultuous seas of fear and uncertainty to the serene shores of financial stability and freedom. In summary, the journey to financial independence is not a sprint, but a marathon, one that requires patience, strategic planning, and a keen understanding of the financial landscape. By embracing the principles of business ownership and investment, while cultivating an objective and educated approach to financial opportunities, individuals can unlock the door to a future rich in possibilities and free from the constraints of economic dependence. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading 
and happy listening.